hallowing be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and we write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. By the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. O God, who makest wars to cease, and by thy mighty arm dost overthrow the adversaries of them that put their trust in thee, come to the help of thy servants, the people of Ukraine, who call upon thy mercy, that they, being delivered from the violence of the enemy, may evermore praise thee with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle of Blessed Paul, the Apostle to the Galatians, beginning at the 26th verse. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate have many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman but of the free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free. Here ended the epistle. Thanks be to God. I was glad when they said unto me, I try. 
Lord shall be even as the Mount Zion, which may not be removed, but standeth fast forever. Thy build stand upon Jerusalem, even so standeth the Lord round about his people, from this time forth forever. Victor, grace, blessed Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the fifth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus then lift up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise of the fishes, as many as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing, may be, nothing be lost. <coughs> Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that the prophet that should come into the world. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
seated. Good morning to all on this fourth Sunday in Lent, Mothering Sunday, Rose Sunday. The holy mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God in thanksgiving for the gift of grace given in and through Holy Mother Church and in prayer for all Christian mothers, grandmothers, and godmothers that they may faithfully witness to the love of Christ in their lives and among their families. The Holy Eucharist we celebrated this week at 10 a.m. Our Lenten series on the Creed by Bishop Robert Barron will continue on Thursday at 1045 downstairs in the hall and Stations of the Cross will be prayed on Friday at 5 p.m. In accordance with the Book of Common Prayer and the usage of the ancient church, the 40 days of Lent are days of absence from flesh and fowl and for other acts of self-denial for the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, excepting the red letter days and all Sundays in Lent. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of Zimbabwe in the traditional Anglican Church province of Africa, for Bishop Wellington Marinda, his clergy and people. We pray too for the Episcopal Christian Church in Canada, for Archbishop Robert Redmile, his clergy and people. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, commending to God's mercy and care, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Brenda Redford, Bob Leesk, Kelly Quinn, Tillman Gotting, Colin Rich, Jacqueline Bissett, Maria Ducarm, Jenny, Emily, Sasha Shaw, Nancy Fernandez, Anne, Azrael Johnston, uh, Jeanette Minette, and all who have desired our prayers and worthy as we are. We continue our prayers for peace, for the end of the war against the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Ukraine, their armed forces and citizen soldiers, for all who have been forced to flee the country, for all caring for the sick, the wounded, and the displaced. And we pray for a free, united, and independent Ukraine. We are remembering our prayers, the men and women of Her Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad, especially those who are on the front lines. We pray for the men and women who serve as police officers and first responders, for the doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals caring for the sick. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, Louis Wotazic, Bobby Crawley, Paul Pearson, Leo, and all whose years mine occurs at this time. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Our flowers today at the high altar are in the colors of blue and yellow, colors of Ukraine, and I thank Beth for her ingenuity in creating blue flowers. It's amazing. I also was wearing some of them yesterday <laughs> with the wonderful blue dye. I also want to share with you, as I did on the email, is that uh, to date, and in in we've given two donations now from the Anglican Catholic Church of Canada to the Canadian Red Cross for humanitarian relief, we have given over $8,700. So my target, or our target, hopefully, uh, in time, will hit the 10,000. We just need to do another 1,300. So, you know, as they say, reach deep. And also, so you know, although I haven't cleared this past parish council, but we'll see, is we'll do the, um, the Lenten offering, you have that blue envelope, the Lenten offering, we'll put that towards the humanitarian relief as well. All right. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. A statement written by St. Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, which, within the hearing of the people of his time, would have thought rather strange. For they knew of the fact that Jerusalem was not free. It was occupied by Roman soldiers and governed by the Roman Empire. No, many would have thought St. Paul must mean something else. These same contemporaries would also have known about the great drama that had taken place in Jerusalem in their lifetime, the salvific drama of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even today, in our own time, Jerusalem is still, as it were, an occupied city. 
There are Jewish, Christian, and Muslim quarters, each having their place and part in that city. And outside the ancient walled city of Jerusalem lies modern Jerusalem, where religious faith confronts contemporary secularism, ancient religious beliefs, ancient political factions, ancient divisions, still all vie for supremacy. But it was not the city of man that St. Paul wrote of. It is the new Jerusalem, the city of God. He recalls for his readers the eschatological reality that goes beyond the secular, the earthbound, the political reality in which humanity dwells, then and now. Today, in our own time, on this Mothering Sunday, we still live amid the tensions between the city of man and the city of God. We live today amidst growing fear and anxiety over what is happening in the Ukraine, the ongoing COVID-19 endemic, and the resulting political, economic, and personal, social realities that flow from those. In the face of these realities, these concerns, these fears, we come on this Mothering Sunday to our spiritual home, seeking the solace, wisdom, and comfort of Holy Mother Church, and through her the grace and strength offered in God's holy word and sacraments. As families do when they come together, we gather in spirit and truth as the family of God around the Lord's table. We draw together in prayer and communion with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We come to be nourished at the altar of the Lord with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Savior Christ. We listen again to the family stories, the scriptures of God's holy word. We raise our prayers and praises to our God who is sovereign over all, he who is our heavenly Father. And we come to our Holy Mother, the Church, for strength, encouragement, hope, and love, all of which are so much needed in these troubled times. In the midst of our Lenten season, we pause to acknowledge the importance of Holy Mother Church in our spiritual lives. Her comfort, caring, and concern, her teachings, prayers, and fellowship. We acknowledge this to be our spiritual home, which is but a reflection not of our earthly city, but of the heavenly city of God. We come to the oasis of Mother Church amidst the challenges of our time, a restful pause on our journey home to God. Although my own pilgrimage to the Holy Land now seems distant, the scripture readings on this fourth Sunday in Lent take me back in my mind's eye to that ancient land and to the holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all, speaks too of our roots in the Old Covenant. For as Christians, we are grafted on to the chosen people of God, becoming with all the redeemed the new Israel. With the redeemed of God, we await the coming in glory of our Savior Christ, when all together we shall enter into the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, the holy city of God. In his revelation, St. John the Evangelist wrote, I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be sorrow or crying or pain, for those former things have passed away. And he who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. This is the Jerusalem of which St. Paul wrote in our epistle this morning. The Jerusalem which is above, which is free, 
which is the mother of us all. Not an earthly city, not a political city, not a divided city, the eternal city, the dwelling place of all who believe on God's holy name. As Jerusalem is the mother of us all, we are reminded too on this Mothering Sunday of the important vocation of our earthly mothers and grandmothers in the nurturing of our faith as sons and daughters of God. We are reminded of the love and example and sacrifice of our Lord's own blessed mother as she raised her son in the humble home in Nazareth and then stood at the foot of the cross witnessing his passion and death. We are reminded of the abiding importance of Holy Mother Church in the hearts and lives of Christ's faithful people. Through the centuries, Holy Mother Church has guarded the faith once delivered to the saints. Like the mother who teaches her children to speak, to understand and communicate, Holy Mother Church teaches us, her children, the language of faith and brings us to a clearer, more mature understanding of the life we are called to live, a life hid with God in Christ. Like the mother who raises her children to walk faithfully before God, so Holy Mother Church raises us in the knowledge and love of God, instilling in each of us his commandments, teaching us the prayers and devotions of faith, guiding us in the way of salvation. The great church father, St. Cyprian, wrote, No one can have God as father who does not have the church as mother. In the midst of our daily cares, in the midst of the world's problems, in the face of human suffering and our own challenges and difficulties, we are comforted in the knowledge of God's power, God's presence, and his plan of salvation. We are comforted in the presence of our spiritual home, Holy Mother Church. We are reminded too of his promise that he would be with his people in good times and bad times, in times of struggle, in times of worry and concern, in times of war and in times of peace. We give thanks to God this day for our mothers, our grandmothers and our godmothers, those who raised us in the faith gave us their love and devotion, kept us in their prayers, and listened to our concerns. We remember most especially our mothers and grandmothers who have gone before us in faith, dwelling as they do in the nearer presence of God, keeping us in their prayers before the throne of Christ. As with our own mothers, Holy Mother Church calls us to faith and prayer so that we may dispel fear, renew hope, strengthen our resolve, that we might know and believe in the power of God, the saving grace of Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, that we might know the peace of Jerusalem, which is above the mother of us all. So on this Mothering Sunday, I pray God's blessing, care, and love on all the mothers and grandmothers of our cathedral Parish, as well as those across the traditional Anglican Church around the world, and all who join with us each Sunday on live stream and YouTube. May God continue to bless and guide us in our day, and may God preserve and guard his Holy Mother Church, our Mother in Faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Oh, praise the Lord, for the Lord is gracious. Oh, sing praises unto his name, for it is lovely. Oh.
Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to have respect unto these our oblations, that they may be proper unto us for our increase in all godliness and for the attainment of everlasting salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. <clears throat> we remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, she through the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy son Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, Saint John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. He that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, 
and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, because Thou hast given us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over the flesh, and live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, we for me this past president to come and to the intercession of this Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, Mother, Mother of God, that thou bless the cross of Peter and Paul, and all the saints, to open it these nine days, that by the help of thine availing our soul be free from sins and safe from all distress. Through the same Jesus. Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living Lord, Son of Mary, by the will of the Father, and the Father of the Holy Ghost, thy death is thy life unto the world, delivered by this thy most sacred body, and life from all thy impudence and from every evil. I repeat unto thy commandments, and suffer me to be separated from that the partaking of thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I am ready to receive, to haunt of my judgment and condemnation. Let 
about the good and fail and forgive me protection both the soul and the body. Release and bring us with the Father in the name of your one God for all of you for the pleasure. And I see the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. <laughs> Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity in itself. sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O most merciful God, who never failest to fulfill us with these holy mysteries, grant, we beseech thee, that we may ever approach them in all lowliness and sincerity, and receive them inwardly with all faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.